Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Westworld Season 3 Episode 6, the episode is called Decoherence, so full spoilers for the episode as always. So, I've never heard of the word decoherence before, I'm obviously familiar with coherence, I didn't realize you could put a D-E in front of it and that would be a word, I mean lots of words work that way but haven't encountered yeah, this one. Yeah, I mean it makes more sense than un or in. Uh, in incoherent is is a thing. So. Incoherent, yeah. In, incoherence yeah. would sound like something to me, but you know, but, uh, but I because mean, because incoherent is a thing. You know, with yeah. T the C E. But I do like the idea of the word decode, kind of playing a factor here. Decoherence, yeah. decode, because we're obviously we're talking about hosts and robots and androids and whatnot. Uh, so this episode, I'm going to go on a limb here and say it's probably the weakest of the season uh, in a number uh, of ways. I think by a significant margin. And there's stuff in here that I like. There's definitely moments I like. There's lines that I like. At one point, Dolores says, if I were me, which really cracked me up. I thought that was a really wet little line. Mm. Uh, I, I think the problem with this episode is that it, it's very much... This is something we've, we've talked about in other shows a lot, is the idea of the episode that's moving the pieces around the chessboard uh, for the next episodes, uh, where things more important things are going to happen. And it's not that there's no weighty moments in this, because there's a couple, and there's a couple that I really like, but... It does definitely feel like it's kind of just clearing the 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 board for, for next time. That sort of episode, I don't usually have a big problem with. I kind of go, oh, yeah, they're never my favourite, but I don't usually yeah. dislike them. I feel like you don't really have room for them in an eight-episode season, especially as we're gearing into the last act of the season. Like, mm, yeah. no, now's not the time for it. It kills the pacing. I think that's the issue with it. Uh, I think I think you can construct an eight-episode season to avoid this issue, whether that means spreading out some of this into other episodes or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. But there's definitely ways writers can can make their season work without having to do an episode that just feels like, oh, we're moving everything into place for next time. Uh, yeah. And I, I think the other issue is that one of the main plots in this episode, because there's obviously a few. One of them is largely dealing with Charlotte. Now, don't get me wrong. Charlotte is a little bit more interesting now because we know it's still a version of Dolores is in there. But she still has probably the weakest plot of the season, I think, in terms of interest. I, I, I just, I wasn't all that interested in her espionage, trying to steal data, you know, as, uh, as, uh, you know, Sarek is... Sarek? Ah, Sarek. Sarak. Sarak. So yeah, I was like, I said Sarak, and I'm like, that's not that's Mass Effect. <laughs> that's Mass Effect. Yeah, Sarak. Uh, he, you know, he's on his way, and he's taking over the company, and she's trying to steal the last of the data that Dolores needs before he destroys it all, because he wants to just destroy everything. He's, he's taking the one thing he wants, and he's just killing everything else, including all the hosts. And I just, I wasn't. And this is, I think this is really what kind of shows that I wasn't as excited by this plot line as I should have been. Is that when it got to the mech getting involved, I'm like, I should be pumped at this moment. I should be pumped for the inter intervention of this mech. And it looked cool. The visual of it was great, mm -hmm. right? But it didn't feel like it amounted to much. It was just two quick things where it's, you know, punches a couple of guys or, you know, pins them up against walls. And I think because I wasn't that invested in her getting out, in Charlotte Dolores' character, because her family plot. It hasn't been the greatest and the ending even of the episode which i will admit does ca catch me by surprise you know it, it, like the the actual the car exploding did feel i mean as much as i expected someone to come after them and it not to be like that easy or clean i, I knew it was coming from she says oh you know i'm gonna protect you or whatever and then she yeah. says it again i'm like oh they're all about to die <laughs> like immediately yeah it goes out of flames and there's a grotesque final moment of her all burned and charred and her hair's all been burned off and uh, she she stands up and it's like this evil music's playing like okay now she's got a reason to hate everyone now she's got a reason to hate maybe even like Dolores Prime she might even hate her now given what's just happened yeah given that you know a whole big thing of this was she, she was scared for her family and she didn't want to do this she was like no this is too risky and and Dolores Prime made her do it yeah because when she's on the phone to Dolores Prime and this is the only time we actually get a even hear Dolores Prime in this episode never mind see is is on the phone and she says to her oh, did you promise connell's that like she kind of like drops that line like you know like you let him kind of sacrifice or her you know what i mean like <laughs> i don't know what Themself. the right yeah pronoun is here uh given that we have a a female host entity inside a male body but 
it's it's just a weird it's a weird thing because i like all the ideas this is playing with the idea that this version of dolores now separate and growing independently and might actually grow to resent dolores and the idea that one dolores will hate another dolores is actually a really fascinating idea if that's the way they go they may not but i i think something about it just isn't clicking in this in this season with this particular plot all the other stuff i really like see this is interesting because i i get where you come from in this I enjoyed this plot significantly more than the uh, the the William plot in oh, this episode. Oh, that's fair. I I def, I think I enjoyed that more. I agree that that's also kind of flawed. And uh, well, I, my problem with the William plot is that I don't think there's anything wrong with it per se. It's just that because the Charlotte plot wasn't working for me, William's plot wasn't good enough to be the anchor for the episode, and mm-hmm. Maeve's plot in a similar fashion. Uh, it's probably the best of the bunch, but still isn't enough to anchor the whole episode. The um, the early part of Maeve's plot really frustrated me when it was oh she's back in the simulation. Okay, fine yeah. because you know we we saw what happened to her body at the end of whatever episode that was. But then we just do the the war world the the, the fight sequence. I'm like, what? Why are we doing this? This is here just to to, to have this yeah, time fill. That that felt like filler. Uh, I mean the only the only interesting thing about that whole th- that whole part is her one request is like, no, I'm going to need, like, an army. I'm going to need allies. I can't do this on my own. And I'm like, okay, that's exciting. I, I like the idea of her, like, basically making him, like, give her more of the hosts we know from the park as, as yeah. her backup, right? That's, that's a cool idea. I like that. And I actually really like the end of her plot. I think the end of her plot in this episode, where, obviously, once Hector, the real Hector's put into the system, and because she can't manipulate hosts inside the simulation, but because his real his real pearls in the room with them in this lab where they're being built she can access the real computers in the room and sort of wakes them up inside the simulation because he's real pearls there it, it sounds convoluted to say it but it actually makes complete sense to me given the rules yeah. that we've set up no it, it makes sense and and you've got her like interrogating the the broken and battered dolores pearl that was inside connell's yeah yeah so it's not dolores prime but she gets a chance to speak to dolores and this is where dolores says you know if i were mean uh, and i actually did this is the one part where the two plots merged with the charlotte stuff that i really liked is the idea to give Maeve a reason to really hate dolores is that dolores for one of the I, mean, I don't know if it's the first time but it's one of the first times in the show or one of the few times in the show where a host genuinely dies where this is no this is murder that this host cannot come back uh, mm-hmm. we see hector be killed because charlotte dolores takes the pearl and crushes it in her hand that really uh, as a moment showed me okay these hosts are uh, you, we always knew they were they were stronger than you know average you know people I didn't. I don't think I quite fully grasped the extent of their strength when we've just seen these pearls kind of go through an explosion, right? Uh, you know, in Connell's case, and it was damaged, sure, but okay, you know, recoverable. Whereas this here, she just smushes it with no effort whatsoever. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the uh, the the pearl that went through the explosion uh, wasn't naked. It was inside the the, the chamber, which we, which that's what that's we fair. see. We see the burned chamber, not the pearl itself. So I have yeah. to imagine that offered some protection to the actual pearl. No, no, it's true. Yeah, uh, that that'd be my guess. Um, but uh, this is probably my favorite moment of the episode. I, I think this moment where a real host, uh, you know, a host really dies, and maybe someone Maeve cares about, Maeve reacts to it because. There was a, there was a, because one of the things I, I really noticed in this scene is when this, this version of Dolores is talking to her, she says, oh, you've aligned your, yourself with a man that does this, this, and this. And I thought, well, she's not really, like, like it, she's kind of going along for the ride right now because she has no real choice, but n- nothing that we've seen kind of feels like Maeve has actually, you know, like, aligned herself that. with, with Sir, Sir, you know, Sirak. It's like, you know, it feels like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like she's pledged allegiance to him. <laughs> No, no, she's she's there out of convenience and more. Well, he did just kind of save my life, but you know he's really building my body. What other choice do I really have right now? Yeah, and likewise, an extension of this moment. My maybe actually, if I really pick a specific moment that I love the most, it's when the the body that's building for Maeve actually finishes and she gets up and she's naked. This is probably the most Terminator this show's ever felt to me. It's her standing there naked, looking she wants to kill someone because that really felt like you know Arnold standing up at the start of the Terminator. It yeah, really, yeah, if, it. it felt like that moment. The music as well, sort of like ramping up. It almost felt Terminator esque with the the sort of the, the loud hum kind of increasing. Um, all it needed was the. Bum 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 bum. That's all it needed to make it full Terminator. But like, 
no, that that moment I think is great. I, I I love the idea of her having a, a vengeful reason to want to like get to Dolores now. It gives her some motivation, uh, which up in, even though I love Maeve, I think up until now in this season she has been kind of lacking some sort of drive to actually do things. It, it felt like they, they kept poking at why she might do something, and this is the first time it's actually felt like no, she has a real motivation now to actually yeah. fight her. It's it's given her a reason to choose a side, and maybe that side isn't with Serac, but more against Dolores. Yeah, yeah, we've been saying since the start that like, ultimately I don't think Maeve's going to want to say with her. Which is actually mentioned the show get renewed for season four, like, like the last oh, yeah, day or two. Yeah. So, that's, that's and I know uh, in the past the uh, the showrunners have mentioned they wanted to do at least four seasons. Um, they they they've, they had that planned out. So whether or not it'll be a fourth and that'll be it, or if they've got more for after that, we'll have to wait and see. Actually, the, I read something this week because of the uh, the, the the overall deal that the, the, uh, the creators just signed with someone, but they're allowed to finish Westworld. The expectation is that they're going to be finishing Westworld up to five or six seasons. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, and that sounds like expected to me. To be honest, I, I can see this going five or six seasons quite comfortably. Oh, I, I can as well. Yeah. Like, like I said, I know they said they had a four season as a, as a plan. You know, uh, as a, as an outline that can. I mean, TV shows do it all the time. Where yeah. okay, well, what next? So I'm not worried. Yeah, and I think I think what's frustrating, and this was the same in season season two, and we were praising season three up until this point for avoiding this, but I think this episode is kind of a a victim of what summer season two was a victim of. Although season two definitely suffered from it a bit more than this, uh, is it just a little bit of sloppiness in the overall construction of the season as a whole, as a whole narrative, where a lot of the parts are amazing, some of the episodes are knockouts, right? Because this is the thing. Last week's episode I thought was like an all timer for this show. Yeah. So this episode had a lot to live up to, so it, it's kind of paling in comparison uh, as, a, as a result of that, uh, in part. But th this episode definitely feels like it's a, just a, a sum of all these different parts, and it does, genuinely, some of the moments feel like they should be a bit more impactful than they are, and I'm, I'm thinking some of the stuff with Charlotte. Uh, I do think the Maeve stuff with Hector dying and her kind of, like, her vengeful kind of... Because I, I do like the contrast between her, like, waking up and wanting revenge, and then at the end kind of a similar thing with Charlotte crawling out of the fire. It's not the exact same, but there is a nice contrast there, or a, not even a contrast. A parallel. Parallel, yeah. Uh, so, William's plot uh, is that, and I, I liked I guess, small snippets of this here or there. Like, I liked uh, the fact that he's in his therapy session and the therapist, uh, this is at the moment where Dolores releases all the information and the therapist, like, because he, he, he goes into a little monologue talking about, you know, what he deserves before shooting his daughter. And when he looks up, she's not even paying attention because she's just staring at her phone. I actually really like that little beat. Yeah, and I, I kind of clocked early on in the episode that um, these people who are in here, these are going to be some of the only people who don't get access to their information mm. at the same time as everyone else. And that's kind of unique. Yeah, and I, you know, and the, the therapist even hangs herself, but the, the, I think most interesting thing about William's plot here, other, other than maybe just the, the novelty of getting to see, you know, young William again, uh, and getting to see uh, Delos again, because I appreciated their presence as actors in this plot, yeah. even if the plot itself isn't, like, I mean, it, it felt a little bit, I guess, I don't know, like, thin TV psychology, I guess. It didn't feel like it was really say, saying much. Yeah, I think my frustration is I don't understand kind of why we're doing all this because it does feel so surface level. Um, and it doesn't feel like this is really driving you know William's plot forward in any significant way. I mean, I, I liked when it tied in thematically to the overall season plot at the very end. The final point that they kind of make to him is you know when they say you know did this because because they revealed that no it wasn't that his father was like harsh and beat him as a child his father was coming home angry because he found out that William had like you know put another kid in the hospital and he was mm. angry at him for being violent and it was like no no it wasn't the father who was who was the violent asshole it was William the whole time and they asked they say to him you know you know was your destination predetermined you know William or did you choose this life. And when he thinks about it, and he says, "Well, if I can't tell, does it matter?" And I like that that line because it kind of it, it does poke at the themes of the season, and mm. you know the idea of like having this machine like sort of pick out where we're going and what does that mean. Uh, what I do like about this plot, at least, is I like that he's actually got the same tech they're using for him to have this VR sort of like dream is actually the same tech that's in the soldiers and it's been in Caleb, the thing in the mouth. Yeah, it was a uh, AR, I believe. AR, sorry, it, yeah. it came up on the screen at one point. 
But I, I like that we're kind of discovering maybe what, some of what Caleb went through by seeing it for the first time in Man in Black, seeing him experience some of this. And we can get an idea from his experience what Caleb might have went through. You know, obviously not yeah. the exact details because obviously he went to Saul William, but... But the, yeah. the concept of how yeah. the, the, the process works. And I did appreciate the dark humour of like cutting back to the scene and our, our present day William having killed you know brutally all the previous versions of himself including the kid uh yeah. he's, he's, stri- he's strangling <laughs> the big boil version <laughs> when we come back and hit- he said no he's hitting him with a chair it was actually i feel like i was watching wrestling for a second because he's just straight up whacking him with a steel chair i'm like this is just wrestling <laughs> what's happening uh but uh, so yeah there, there, was, there was things to like in here there was little moments it was nice seeing the actors again and there was nice little things in the performance but again, I I think it was maybe lacking like enough of a meaty point to really feel like it was worth the time we spent on it in this episode. I I think all the stuff that's important in this episode you could have like condensed down quite significantly and sprinkled into another episode or two. Uh, most likely. I agree, and it's weird that for the most part I I've liked the shift eight episodes. It's felt tighter. Yeah, that said though, season two probably had like two or three episodes that felt like this. I think it's maybe saying something. If season three only has one, then that's still a net positive. Like it is, it's an improvement. But at yeah. the same time, I'm wondering, okay, if they had nine episodes now instead of eight, maybe they could have spread this out over two episodes, and we could have had more interesting a plots going on with this kind sure. of there, and maybe that would have worked out better overall. Yeah, no, I can see it. I can see it. Um. The end of this, though, which is, is kind of interesting and exciting, is, uh, you know, Bernard and Stubbs show up and kind of wake him up. And basically, the, the, the hospital is in chaos because of everyone finding out everything. Uh, and it's like, hey, it's like, you know, do you know who you are? Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, the man in black says, I've realized my purpose. I am the good guy. I did like that line as well. And makes me, I'm almost scared to think what he's, <laughs> what he thinks he needs to do now. Cause he says he knows what he has to do. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh God. Um, it's, it's intriguing for sure. Um, I'm intrigued by which that. Which is why but... I'm like, as much as I'm kind of down on this episode, I'm hoping it doesn't sour the, the, the season overall. It, it's, th- it's a misstep, but. It, it's a misstep in execution, but it's not a misstep in ideas. Because all the ideas that it presents me with going forward, I like all of them exactly yeah Uh, Mm. i think it's 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 a it's a pacing problem like if this had been like episode three in terms of like doing like this william stuff for example Mm. i probably wouldn't be as down on it i'd be like okay we're we're setting up where he is going into the season whereas now i'm like no no no, we're getting into the end game give me the good stuff yeah i that's part of it we do have to acknowledge yet another travelers actor uh on this show because the doctor who comes in to put him on his ar thing uh was one of the travelers he was like the the, the not a rival to because they're all on the same side technically but there's sort of like a rival traveler squad in the show cell yeah cell yeah and he was the leader of this other cell uh he's a little bit antagonistic towards the main characters but uh i laugh because he's the second travelers yeah. actor possibly three if my hallucination and that 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 previous episode uh was <laughs> correct i don't think it was but it's it's, it's possible um, so i'm just saying i'm just saying secret 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 traveler sequel so i'm saying secret traveler sequel man i want more travelers i know uh so that, that was uh that was, that was, you know, so there's some good stuff in there I, I think my other problem as well and part of why because to swing back around to charlotte because i don't think we kind of decoded all that stuff you know we see her go around try to steal the data she snaps the one guy's neck i think the the other problem i have with charlotte's plot in this episode is that it felt really inelegant how it well not how it wrapped up but how it revealed like when when sarek just turns around and says uh we've found the the host haven't we charlotte and then it just kind of reveals it there and then and then explains oh i've been watching you the whole time you played your part it it felt like such a cheesy villain monologue like i've i've known all along <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what actually frustrated me the most about this this moment in particular is he says oh yeah the thing that gave it away is is she phoned to check on her family and, and the real charlotte would never have done that mm-hmm. and what really annoys me about that is the big defining moment for charlotte you know th- this season and and learning who charlotte was was seeing that video message to her son, right? Mm. And like in the middle of this firefight, in danger, when she thought she was going to die, this is this is what she, you know, did. So it was like, no, no, this was actually extremely true to Charlotte. Was you just didn't know her well enough? Which I also think thinks a bad thing. The idea that Sarek doesn't know who Charlotte was really—that he, you know, he thinks he does, but doesn't. 
Yeah, I get that, but I think it's frustrating to use that as the excuse yeah. to the audience as to why he knows. So I didn't like this scene that much. I just it felt a little bit generic and villain villain monologue, and him him just kind of revealing it without any. I don't know. It felt like something that any sort of cheap thriller would do is him just turning around and saying, "Oh, I know already," and that's it. And there was yeah. it, it just it felt really deflating to me. It felt like there was no real payoff to it. The one little touch in this scene that I did like though is that I liked the uh, the reveal that he was a hologram. Not the reveal itself, but I loved that like the gas that she had planted, the gas grenade. You can hear people choking long before Sarek knows notices anything's happening. So by the time she reveals, no, I've already thought about it. Like you already know he's a hologram at this point because he's not affected by the gas. But I like that little touch that you can hear people in the room, you know, ch yeah. choking and coughing and whatever. Yeah, I did think it was a bit. I don't want to say generic, but expected that oh look he's a hologram you yeah. know yeah well that was it was more the execution of how they kind of teased it right before the reveal that i that i liked yeah I, no i i like that moment but i think i dislike the concept of oh all episode, of course he's not been here like well yeah obviously yeah so uh, yeah weaker episode for sure uh even though there's a lot of little moments i do like and i like i still like the ideas that it's, it's poking at but i think if, in terms of execution this episode was a little bit of a misfire which is a shame. Which, for the record, is not why it's a late review this week. I, this was not a choice because of how we felt about the episode. This was, that was just a circumstance thing. Yes, uh, a handful of various issues across both of us. Yes, yes. It was. It was. It, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't one person's fault uh, yeah. this this time. Um, but uh, tech issues, also notwithstanding. Um, so yeah. So apologies. It was a late review this week. We should be back to normal uh, next time. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I'm still hopeful for the last couple of episodes. I have no reason to feel doubtful. There's nothing about this episode. And you know what I think is? I think it's almost comforting that season two kind of had the same issue more, more more often than this one has, for sure. But I, I was still satisfied by the ending. I was still satisfied by a lot of the big things it did. They still had some standout, fantastic episodes. So I have no reason to doubt. So ha having that already in the show's history no, it lets me know that this is not just like, oh, we're declining now, because the show's already bounced back multiple times from a weak episode. Yeah, I agree. It's funny. It's not like another recent show where we got to episode six and went, <laughs> oh, this wasn't very good. And then we kind of don't want to watch the rest of this that much anymore. It kind of ruined it. Whereas this has definitely not had that impact. It's been, okay, it wasn't a great episode. There's some nice ideas, but you know, not, not, not its best showing for sure. But I'm sure next week we'll be back to, back to some solid great stuff and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think part of it as well is that by far... The greatest plot this season is Dolores and Caleb and all the fascinating ideas because I was raving last week not just about the, the broader sci-fi ideas but how their two characters relate all that stuff is the, I think the most engaging it's the most layered and I think I really felt their absence in this episode yeah me too so I, I feel like it's supposed to be this mysterious thing of oh what's she doing while we're not yeah uh, you know knowing what's going on and uh, I mean it's not working because the other stuff's not interesting enough to make me go, to make me wonder about it. I'm just like, no, this would have been better. It's, it's actually kind of funny how Dolores and Maeve have flopped, uh, flip flopped from last season in the sense that Maeve had a good starting moment, but is kind of floundering in the middle of the season a little bit. And maybe now that she's got her motivation, she's going to really pick back up again. But Dolores was kind of the same last season where she had a really strong start and a really strong ending, but she was they were kind of spin wheels with her. For the middle of the season, I, but Maeve was like really interesting and fascinating all season long. I feel like they've, they've switched this season, where Dolores yeah, has been fascinating all season. I don't think Maeve is anywhere near as low as Dolores was because I think, correct if I'm wrong, Maeve's only really had three episodes out of the six here. She had the That's first true. one where it was mostly the simulation, then the second one where she was out in the world, you know, controlling the tech and the the, 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 I mean, the mob stuff, and that was kind of great. That that's true. I I think maybe the uh, the credit to this season is that it's it's addressing the problem to a, an extent by limiting how much it has to have some of these characters. Where last season they'd have felt they need to have Maven almost every episode, and that would have been way worse. Because that tried was a that. big problem with Dolores last season, where yeah. we went like we, we could have gone two or three episodes without her and then come back to her, but we had to just keep checking up on her riding a horse with Teddy or something. <laughs> so. Yeah, but anyway, so I don't want to be too down in this because I'm still really excited about the last couple of episodes. Uh, mm. But definitely a weaker one for sure. Uh, but all, all good shows, have, even the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, had bad eggs. So, you know, <laughs> and this this was better than bad eggs, admittedly. So, well, yeah, I mean, it's not that hard, is it? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen worse though than bad eggs. I mean, I mean, I have too, but I mean, it's still a fairly low bar. Yeah. 
Anyway, there you go. That's Westworld uh, for the week. We'll be back at our, our usual our usual day uh, with a bit of luck, uh, early Tuesday uh, for the next Westworld review. So uh, let us know what you think. Uh, this one in the comments below, you can like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here, you can head over to patreon.com slash TV and support us for as little as $1 per month and get some bonuses for your troubles, including a bonus already cancelled uh, where we are working our way through Six Feet Under. The second one just went up recently. So go and have a look. Yeah, it's audio only, but you get it for the $1 tier. Uh, and then there's other stuff at the $5 tier and so on and so on. So go and have a look, see. Uh, but that's us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>